Hey kids, it's pop up man. Apparently, <laughs> Grammy my my. Anyway, you ready to explore the Bible? Good. Take your Bibles and turn with me to uh, Revelation chapter two. Yes, we have moved on to Revelation chapter two. All right, you there? Good. All right. Now here we find that he starts his first message, and this is to the church in Ephesus. Um, interesting. Uh, your Grammy, my, my, and I have been to Ephesus. We've actually walked on the streets where this church was, and uh, it was kind of cool. And uh, I don't know, if you ask me sometime, maybe we'll pull out the pictures and show you the ruins. But in any case, uh, notice what it says in, uh, in uh, Revelation chapter 2, verse 1. It says, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus. Now, the angel would be who? Yeah, the pastor, probably talking to the pastor of the church of Ephesus, right? These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, and who walketh in the midst of the golden candlesticks. Okay, we saw that. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not and has found them liars, okay? Now, here he's saying it is important that you be discerning, that you take a look at the fruits of people, that the, the teachings of people, and that you be discerning, and that you choose that which is true and right and just, okay? And notice he goes on and says, and you have now has borne and, uh, and, and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Okay, you've kept going. <laughs> Nevertheless, verse 4, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Now this is something that a lot of churches and a lot of people do. They love God. They love Christ. They love serving him and they serve him. And they serve him so much that they start thinking that serving him is loving him. And they do all the right things, and they say all the right things, and they make all the right decisions, but the motivation of love has gone away. You know what? That love is important because that love will change what we do, okay? Not only that, it will give what we do meaning and purpose, yeah, this is important. You remember what Jesus said was the first and great commandment? Thou shalt what? Yeah, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and thy soul and mind and strength and might. Love the Lord of God. That's the most important thing. And the problem is that they were doing all of the other things but they weren't doing the one important thing. And that's very easy to fall into. When we get to the point when we are, we are so busy with the work of the master that we forget the master of the work. We forget why we're doing it and we forget loving the one that has given his life so that we will have meaning and purpose. And that's what happened. They had left their first love. Verse 5, remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent. Now this is something that's interesting because they on the outside looked like they were doing everything they ought to and maybe they were, but they weren't loving God. If you don't love God, if you aren't doing the things that you do because you love God, then you're missing out on the blessing and God isn't being honored. So it is possible for us to do all the right things, but because we're doing them for the wrong reasons, we miss out. Now, what would be the wrong reasons? Well, maybe so that other people look at us and think, "Woo, there's a good Christian. Yeah, maybe it's pride. Or maybe it's so that we will feel good about ourselves. Yep, I'm still serving God. Yep. 
you know what, there's a lot of different reasons why people will keep doing the works of God without loving God himself. And that's something we need to watch out for. But then he goes on and says in verse 6, But this thou hatest, that thou, this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which also I hate. Now it's interesting, he says the deeds of the Nicolaitans. He didn't say he hated the Nicolaitans, just the deeds, the things they do. Now who were the Nicolaitans? We don't know. <laughs> you know what? Every commentary you read has a different idea. It might have been the Gnostics. It might have been the legalizers. It might have been the Judaizers. It, it, it might have been just so many different beliefs. But it doesn't really matter who it was because in this day and age, there's a lot of strange beliefs out there. and We need to know what they are. But more importantly, we know, ought to know the beliefs that we ought to have so that we will know a false teacher when he comes along. Yeah. Anyway, but notice he goes on and says, verse 7, He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Uh, that's interesting to understand. He's going to say this a lot here. He that hath ears to hear. Let me ask you, do you have ears to hear? Because it is possible for us to read the Bible and not pay any attention to what it says. It is possible for us to go to church and hear the message, but not hear anything that's being said. Yeah, you see, do you have ears to hear? Are you trying to learn? Are you trying to hear the message of God? That's the important question. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. What a beautiful truth. This was the letter to the church there in Ephesus. Don't forget your first love. Return to your first love. Love God. Yeah, all your works are fine. You hate the Nicolaitans and the false teachers. Yep, that's good. But you need to return to your first love. Hey, love you guys. See you later.